Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to end the week strong with another Alabama recruiting nugget. Um, I'm Ty Waldrop here with Andrew Bone, and today we're talking about four-star strong side defensive end Monkel Goodwine, who's currently uh, appears to be what Maryland's number one player, and he's the number five strong side defensive end in the country. Yeah, Monkel Goodwine. We've talked about him a lot on BamaInsider.com. Uh, you know, really since last summer when he camped in Tuscaloosa, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of buzz around him after his camp that he was uh, about to commit to Alabama. And, and we've, we've seen that with some some of these uh, guys who are in this 2021 recruiting class. Uh, Kendrick Blackshire last summer, he was on the verge of committing and decided to hold off. But now it seems like uh, Alabama's uh, – back in the lead for him and could be committing soon. And Monko Goodwine, uh, you know, certainly another guy that visited camp and, um, you know, had Alabama at the top of his list. Still believe that's the case. Now, he doesn't do many interviews. Um, you know, that's mm-hmm. the one thing with him. is He's not on Twitter right now, so you don't really know kind of what's going on with him. He's kind of keeping a, a extremely low profile. But as we – things that we do know, he did put out a top five last month. Um, three SEC schools were in it. Alabama, Texas A&M, LSU, and he also had Maryland, Penn State in it. So those are the final five for him, schools that are heavily pursuing him, heavily wanting him. Obviously, Mike Loxley would like to keep him at home and, and mm-hmm. get him to uh, to Maryland. Um, LSU has started to have some success uh, in the D.C. area, uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, but uh, – Alabama is the program that has had probably had the most success there uh, over the course of the last decade. Um, you know, just all the guys that they've recruited from the, from the area uh, who come in and had a tremendous amount of success, and uh, you know, certainly a uh, you know another guy that you know they're hoping to to pull in. I mean, he is a uh, pre, you know premier target for them, a guy that um, you know we all believe has Alabama at the top of his list as of right now. Now. Not really sure when he's going to make that decision. He, he's been kind of quiet uh, on that front. Um, you know, we thought maybe he was going to decide in the spring. Uh, he was expected to come back down to Tuscaloosa for junior day. That didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Then he said he was going to come back for the spring game. Obviously, the spring game was canceled because of COVID. But, um, you know, we'll see when he, you know, when he does decide to make some more visits uh, or when he can make some more visits. I think he wants to take some more trips before that decision happens. But, uh, but he's certainly a guy that Alabama is, uh, is heavily pursuing, uh, you know, led by Charles Huff, uh, Alabama running backs coach who recruits the area. Holman Wiggins also does a great job of kind of recruiting the area, the kind of tag team uh, in that regard. So you know, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But he's a uh, you know, big defensive man. He's six foot four, about 265 pounds right now. Um, you know, could end up growing into, uh, you know, 290, 300-pound defensive lineman before it's all said and done. You know, potentially see him as a you know, Jonathan Allen, a Quentin Williams type player mm. uh, down the road because that, that, that's what you know. That's kind of the size of those guys. Uh, what those guys were coming out of high school. So uh, you don't know how much bigger he's going to get until he gets there mm-hmm. uh, once he develops. And uh, but yeah, I could easily see him carrying um, you know 25, 30 more pounds uh, pretty easily. Yeah, and you mentioned the thing that stands out to me is you mentioned that he was planning to come for that spring game, and we've talked a lot about how the in, the shutdown of in-person recruitment has affected Alabama's sort of targets. A lot of these guys have uh, maybe were planning to commit in June or July after they took some visits, and now they don't know that you know they they want to wait till they can get some of these visits in. Just from a from a sort of single day recruiting impact, how big is it to lose the A day game? Because that's something we haven't really uh, dived into very much. Well, it's big. You know, I think it's big just to, uh, you know, miss any spring, uh, you know, because there's kids that come throughout the, uh, you know, whether it's a spring practice, uh, you know, a, a spring scrimmage uh, or the spring game. You know, it's always good to come to the spring game because you see all the fans that are in mm-hmm. attendance. You got, you know, because you come, you come to a place like Alabama or, you know, a lot of these bigger SEC schools, um, recruits are known. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. fans know who these recruits are. They're taking pictures. They're signing autographs. They're doing all this stuff that they don't normally do at other at other programs that they visit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's kind of something that always stands out to them is just a, the amount of uh, people who know them uh, just by seeing their face because they follow them, um, you know, on Twitter. They follow them on, on Rivals, uh, on, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, so I think that's something that really impresses recruits. Um, you know, especially when they visit a program like Alabama, just because of uh, all the fans and, and how obsessed they are. And uh, you, you go to an Alabama spring game and you see just, you know, 
so many fans that have filled the stadium just to come to uh, just the spring game. So, uh, yeah, I think that hurts a little bit, you know, not being able to do that. But I think, you know, just overall not being able to visit at all um, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the spring, uh, during the summer, hopefully – you know, things may get back to normal. Maybe there's going to be a time period in the month of July where recruits are able to visit, which is going to be ex – if that happens, that's going to be extremely crazy, extremely mm -hmm. hectic because there's going to be – there's going to be recruiting battles going on then, trying to get kids to come to uh, your cookout or your, your – you know, whatever event you're going to call it. Uh, if you only have a short window, you know, you may have Alabama and Georgia fighting for, uh, you know, this kid to come to their event. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, or Alabama going up against Texas or whoever it may be, because all these programs are going to try to have something if they can uh, in the month of July before the season starts and hopefully, uh, you know, get some of these guys to make decisions. Because, you know, like you said, you know, a lot of these guys are having to push back their plans. They're, you know, they were going to visit uh, during the spring, during the summer, and then hopefully make a decision before, before their senior season will none of those visits happen. So you know, kids are having to decide, well, should we go ahead and make a decision or should we wait until the fall and take those visits? So, you know, it's kind of 50, 50 for a lot of kids right now. You know, we're just not sure what's going to happen, but um, you know, hopefully there is going to be a time period and maybe in the month of uh, July where kids can take some visits and um, you know, hopefully get to the, get to their top programs, uh, you know, at some point before the season starts. Yeah, absolutely. July or, or even August or, you know, whenever, whenever we get to that point where, where some in-person recruiting is, is able to happen again, it's, it's going to be crazy for coaches and, and these kids to, to get back to good wine. You know, you mentioned these, he doesn't do much. He doesn't do a lot of interviews and he did, but he did release a top five. Does Maryland stand out as, as maybe one of the, the teams that's going to give Alabama the biggest run for their money with his commitment or, or, or do we know, is it, is it kind of just up in the air because he doesn't talk a lot about it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's possible. Um, you know, Maryland's, uh, you know, having some success, you know, keeping some keeping some kids at home. And uh, obviously, uh, Mike Lotz, he's doing, you know, he's a great recruiter and, uh, you know, trying to build some momentum there. Obviously, you know, just recently uh, got uh, Talia, uh, Tonga Viola mm -hmm. to, to transfer in. So, you know, and they're, they've been able to get some, like I said, keep some kids at home, some top kids at home. I saw that last year, and uh, you know they certainly want to do do so again this year. And uh, he's certainly one of their top overall targets, and you know potentially you know may be able to get him on board because he's not able to take visits elsewhere. He's not able to take all these visits during the spring or during the summer. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I'd still be kind of surprised if we didn't see him at Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that Alabama's you know continue to push hard for him now you know, where we may see something change is if Alabama starts to get some more defensive end mm -hmm. uh, commitments. Now, uh, you know, they're still trying to, you know, get some defensive end commitments on board right now. I and mean, there's some top guys that are out there that they're heavily recruiting. Shamar Turner out of Texas, uh, Shambry Jackson uh, out of Orlando. Uh, you know, those are some guys that, you know, if they were potentially, potentially get those guys on board, do you still have room? So, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, one of those guys commits, that may give Michael Goodwine uh, a little bit of pressure to uh, to go ahead and make a decision as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's something we're all um, you know kind of keeping an eye on. And see, you know, who's going to be that first defensive end commitment for Alabama mm -hmm. this past? Uh, you know, and it could pot potentially be Michael Goodwine. We just don't know yet because he he hasn't really said said too much, and um, we we aren't really sure when he's going to make that decision. Yeah, did we have a sense? Uh... You know, did, did we did we have a sense of when he was thinking about committing before everything shut down? Did, did we kind of feel like he might be one of these guys that was targeting before his senior season started? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think – and I think maybe it was going to happen before – even before the summer. Um, I think mm -hmm. he was hoping to take some visits during the spring, uh, maybe get to a few spring games and then, uh, then make that decision. But obviously none of that happened mm -hmm. and uh, everything's just kind of gotten pushed back. But, um, you know, not really sure if he knows – Hey, this is going to be my school. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still want to take some visits. Um, you know, we all kind of think that Alabama's in the driver's seat for him there, but you know, it could be another program. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's going to be Penn State. I don't know if it's going to be Texas A and I don't know if it's going to be LSU. I think, pro I, if I had to put two schools up there, I would say probably, uh, you know, Alabama and Maryland, just because mm -hmm. of you know Alabama being the you know kind of considered leader for him for such a long time. And then I would say Maryland, just because, uh, you know, in-state guy um, hasn't been able to really take many visits. Um, and Mike, Michael Oxley do, doing such a great job uh, recruiting up there. So that would just be my personal mm -hmm. opinion. 
uh, without knowing too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure some of the guys who cover that region may say, oh, well, uh, it's Alabama and somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's not Maryland. But, uh, but just from reading different things and from evaluating things from my perspective, that's who kind of it seems like it's going to be between. Yeah, Mako Goodwine, again, you know, just very emblematic of, uh, you know, a lot of the guys we're talking about in 2021. Uh, we know that y'all look at the rankings and Alabama's had some commitments lately, but we see it on Twitter. We see it on the message boards. We're still worried. Alabama's uh, 31 overall in the recruiting rankings. Don't worry. From everything we're hearing from guys, from everything Bones hears from the guys he reaches out to, Alabama is not going to end anywhere near 31, you know, got commitments from these guys are going to start to come in. They want to wait and take some visits, you know, they're, they're sort of shut down and, and quarantining just like most of us are. And uh, when, you know, the in-person recruitment uh, dead period ends, these guys will take some visits. We'll probably see a lot of recruit recruiting um, or commitment decisions happen in July and August and early in the season. Uh, Bone probably won't sleep very much for a while. <laughs> um, but that'll be fine. But, you know, hey, just continue to follow along. We'll update you as these guys get there. Uh, do me a favor and click subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, right now if you're not already. Make sure the notifications are turned on, guys, uh, so you get these videos. And so when Bone has his Q&As, you know, you know when that happens and you can ask a question. Or when these guys commit, we're going to put those up right away and you want to hear about it from us. You don't want to hear about it two days later and be the last one to know. So just continue to follow along with us and we'll keep y'all updated.